Is it a cyst? A wart? What is that huge red lump on the hamster? That is a large subcutaneous tumour which causes the hamster much pain and irritation. This hamster also has a large bleeding ear wart that causes pus secretion, blocking the ear canal and a perianal wart which bleeds frequently, causing it to often soil the cage with blood. What can we do to help this hamster? This is a Be Kind Pets veterinary educational video sponsored by Fapaya Vets. As this video shows surgical procedures, your discretion is advised. An increasing number of young Singaporean families today keep hamsters in their home as pets. Often, they leave the care of the pets to their young children. This does not usually cause any problems as taking care of the hamsters is generally easy. However, when the hamsters start to have problems such as tumours and lumps, it is hard to identify with the naked eye, and the young children may not be able to identify these problems at an early stage. This results in cases such as this two-year-old female dwarf hamster. She has three tumours which have occurred due to her old age. Moreover, due to the friction between the floor and the tumours when she walks, she has also suffered bleeding, pain and irritation. Considering that a dwarf hamster's average lifespan is only two and a half years, it is important to remove all three tumours at the same time. Leaving the tumours untouched would result in more pain and possibly even more infection. So, what can we do? The best method is to use the surgical excision method, where we would firstly inject the hamster with the anaesthetic Zolotil 100. Next, we would excise the tumour, and finally, we would stitch up the incision. However, the procedure is risky. Firstly, because the hamster is old, the healing process after the procedure will be very slow and there is a risk that the hamster might die during anaesthesia. Secondly, the stitch size would be very large for the hamster. After all, if a human had a tumour proportionately as large, it would stretch from the armpit to below our waist. Considering these risks and after getting the permission of the owners, we went ahead with the surgery. Firstly, she had to be shaved so as to prevent any obstruction during the stitching up of the wound. Next, the hamster was injected with one drop of the anaesthetic Zolotil 100 at 4pm and the scabs on the outside of the largest tumour were removed. Due to the goriness of the surgery itself, here are the highlights of the surgery. At 4.07pm, the anaesthetic gas is started. At 4.10pm, the gas is stopped. At 4.18pm, the surgery ends. The relatively short duration of the surgery at 18 minutes is particularly significant given the size of the tumour was very large. After the surgery, we removed a wart from the ear. Um, when the wart was removed, there was a lot of pus coming out of the ear. But now the ear canal has now been freed and a uh, earbud can be in inserted into the area. We also removed a uh, anal wart from the anal area. Um, there was also the removal of a tumour of dimensions uh, 2.5 cm by um, 2 cm by 1 cm. It was removed from the uh, left armpit area. The stitches are around 3 cm. In the end, we were very surprised and happy to find that the hamster had indeed survived the procedure, as she had lost a lot of blood during the surgery itself. As pet owners, here are some of the things you can do to make sure that your beloved companions do not suffer as much as her. Firstly, regularly examine your hamsters for any unexpected lumps or bumps and have it checked out by a vet as soon as possible. Some of the possible areas where tumours can occur include on the side, on the ear, in the cheek pouches, and below the neck. Secondly, if your hamster does have a large tumour or lump, make sure that you go to a veterinarian who has experience in hamster anesthesia and surgery. Finally, if your hamster has undergone a surgery to remove a tumour or a lump, make sure to ask for a histology as well. A histology is a test that analyzes the tumour after it has been removed to determine if the tumour was cancerous. If the tumour was cancerous, the problem will return. If the tumour was not cancerous, the problem will be over. Either way, the results will guide you in taking a more informed decision to care for your pet. In conclusion, as pet owners and as parents, do remember that your children are greatly affected by the well-being of their pets, possibly resulting in severe loss of appetite and distress. Thus, attending immediately to your pet's medical problems is best for all, both for the pets and for your children.